it's taken so many years of like reflection and growth and like doing all the uncomfortable work to shape me into the person that I am. And I look back and I'm like, I'm so grateful for all of it. But like by leaning in and like not putting them into like a storage unit in my mind, but like actually processing them and like growing and evolving from it has allowed me to like have confidence in myself because I'm just like, I know that I'm enough. Hey everyone, welcome back to On Purpose, the number one health podcast in the world. Thanks to each and every one of you that come back every week to listen, learn, and grow. Now, you know that I love sitting down with friends, people that I've connected with, people that I share space and energy with on this podcast. But sometimes something funny happens. I have a guest on who I feel I know. I've connected them with them several times, digitally, virtually, but never physically. And then finally, when I get to experience their energy in person, I just go, yeah, this is my kind of person. And today's guest is someone that feels just like that. Her name, of course, is Vanessa Hudgens, an American actress, singer, entrepreneur, and producer. After making her feature film debut in 13, she rose to fame portraying Gabriela Montez in the high school musical film series, which brought her significant mainstream success. Since the release of her studio albums and the high school musical franchise, Vanessa has focused on her acting career. She's appeared in films like Band Slam, Beastly, Sucker Punch, Journey to The Mysterious Island, Spring Breakers, The Princess Switch, Second Act, and Bad Boys for Life. She also launched her beverage business, Cali Water, a line of cactus water, and her own skincare brand, No Beauty. Welcome to the show, my dear friend and becoming a deeper friend, uh, Vanessa Hudgens, and our beautiful Darla. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you from me and both Darla. You're so good at this. Wow. No, I just, I, I meant all of it. You've had this, you know, I actually, grew, I grew up watching High School Musical because of my sister. Okay. So I have a sister that's four and a half years younger than me. Yeah. She loves you, loves High School Musical. So I watched it through her lens. Yeah, I love that. And A and connecting th thing for the two of you. I yeah, love that. exactly, exactly. And then obviously we connected through Joe. Uh, and our Zen Zone. Yeah, which is uh, so funny. Which is just amazing what Joe started and built. It's so incredible. It's, I'm like, if it wasn't for that, I never would have met Cole. I know, <laughs> yes. And, that, and, then and I'm that. like, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so you are officially giving me and Joe the credit now. <laughs> yes, completely. <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't be a thing if it wasn't for you guys. Uh, for Joe, for Joe. I, Joe, you can take all the credit. Uh, you deserve it. Darla, I just do want to acknowledge you are the first ever dog to appear on on a purpose she she jumped up here and seated herself like a human i know i'm so grateful she's here she has such a beautiful energy too I and know. i'm so happy she's with she's us she's a little lady <laughs> <laughs> i was told that she was a french girl in a past life oh that's yeah. very cool i know well this is the thing vanessa that you know i think when people view you from afar of course you have this amazing career you do an incredible job, whether you're hosting, whether you're acting, whether you're starring. I thought you were awesome in Bad Boys for Life. Thank you. Uh, I love the movie, of course. You know, just how your roles and those characters evolved into the franchise was amazing. You're doing so many incredible things with Cali Water. And I know we've got so many other things to talk about. But I think for me, what got me deeply intrigued in you and wanting this conversation with you is the conversations we had through Zen Zone. And so for those of you who don't know what Zen Zone is, this is something that Joe Jonas had the idea for at the beginning of the pandemic. And you can tell me how you heard about it yeah, because yeah, I yeah. don't know how I'll you I'll tell talk. you my side. Yeah. So, so Joe reached out to me and he said to me that we did this meditation as part of a, a charity event for the WE Foundation. And I was asked to teach meditation. Me and Joe had never met before. We were on this live. I lead this meditation and Joe said he had a great time. We got introduced over text. He texted me and said, hey, we're doing, we're getting together with my friends this Saturday. It's the pandemic. I'd yeah. love for you to teach a meditation. I was like, sure. I thought we'd do it once. We've now done it every week for 75 weeks. We've had a bit of a hiatus for the last couple of months. Uh, yeah. And he would just invite his friends and I hadn't even met him, let alone everyone. That's where I met you. Uh, yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know, I lead a meditation, but then I open it out to a beautiful group of people to reflect, share their insights. And we did this every week during the pandemic. 
And when you'd come on and you'd talk and share your reflection, I was just like, I had no idea <laughs> that Vanessa had this like intentional, mindful practice in her life. And I was so, that was so endearing and intriguing, but <laughs> tell us about how you discovered yeah, yeah, yeah. ZenZone. And, um, yeah. Me and Alexandra Ship were yes. both working on Tick Tick Boom. Yes. Um, and we like had uh, the rehearsal space and then we had to shut down production because of COVID and locking down and everything. And um, when we finally got back to it, it was in September, like pre-vaccine. So we were in like a bubble. But we, she was like, I've been doing this meditation. I think that you would really enjoy it. And I'm like, so down, love a meditation. Um, and I got on there and I was just like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And, and your meditation that you led was so so like grounding and centering and just like fulfilling for my soul and I was like oh my god this is amazing and then I remember I got added to the group chat and then we got sent the the zoom for the next zoom everyone sending confirmations of themselves like Joe's sending one Wilmer sends one I send one and then I thought someone was making a joke by sending a baseball player sliding onto a base and lifting his head and going like <laughs> so I was like hot and responded in all caps hot and then I got on the zoom and Alex was sitting next to me and I remember seeing Cole and just being like who is that and she's like I don't know and then like he smiled and then I was like who is that <laughs> she's like I don't know and I found like his name and then like found him on Instagram and then sent follow and and then I was like oh he's the baseball player hilarious <laughs> hilarious well I already shot my shot so he knows and then later I come to find out that like he was watching me hit Alex and he was like there's either like something on my face or like this girl hates me or like I don't know but he could like see me because it's like that meditation. Everyone's like sitting and like so still. And <laughs> I'm here like slapping Alex, <laughs> like losing my mind. Um, but it's been so beautiful. Like I, I love the practice so much. And it's so it's so nice having you there leading the charge and and just like feeling so safe in this space to like reflect and and to hear how different things affect each other and like listening to each other. And the, the reflection is so conducive to growth so it's just like been so beautiful I'm so grateful of it oh, you, you, you're genuinely so kind I really appreciate those beautiful words but I, I find it fascinating that this beautiful relationship for you has evolved we'll talk about that but I'm surprised we haven't yet had one so Joe also comes up with funny zen names for oh, yeah, every yeah, yeah. episode so I think we've had Zendaya we've had <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, there's so many I'll have to look through, but we haven't had a Vanessa Hudson. We haven't done that. We haven't done that yet. I'll have to throw that out to him uh, as an option for the next one. Uh, yeah, he That's hasn't, hilarious. He hasn't done that yet. No. But but when did when I when I heard your reflections, I was like, okay, Vanessa's been in this space for a long time, like spirituality, whatever you call it. And yeah. I'd love to hear it through your language. I was like, oh, she she's an evolved being. This is something she has invested in for many years before this, this is not her first meditation, this is part of her life. When did any of these ideas get introduced to you and how do they exist in your world? Yeah. I'm genuinely fascinated yeah, yeah, because yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. I know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've always been a meditative person. I've, I remember, I used to live in San Diego and I my parents would drive me up to LA all the time for auditions. Um, and it's a long drive, you know, it's like three and a half hours. Yeah, like, yeah. And I'm young, I'm probably like eight years old, nine years old. Um, and I remember one time just sitting with the window down, like feeling the breeze on my face, just like clear mind staring out and my dad being like, what are you thinking about? And I was like, literally nothing <laughs> and, I, and then I think that as I got older that moment for some reason would come back to me and I was like oh man like am I stupid like does that mean that I have nothing going on in my mind and then as I continued to evolve the more that I realized that was a state of zen a state of peace and like meditation practice is something that has naturally just like come for me um I feel like I started actually getting introduced to it when I was 
probably 16. I was in Brazil. Um, this was like after High School Musical had come out and me and Zac Efron were dating and we went to this island like in Brazil somewhere and it was a magazine and they were like, we can offer you yoga classes if you want. And I was like, oh, I've never done that. Like I'd love to try. I'm always down to try new things. And I remember it was like outside under this canopy of trees and it was like the first time that I feel like I had a mindful practice mm. um, where I was like aware of what I was actually doing. And I just became hooked. I remember I was like straight off the bat, I was like, I think I need to become a yoga instructor. <laughs> I think that's just something that <laughs> I, I need it. to do One now. yoga class. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I was like, yeah. I'm sold. Yeah. And then I think that like that really led to like mindfulness and like practice and and then when did meditation actually come into play? Honestly, probably Deepak Chopra. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I Deepak's feel like, great. Yeah, I feel like I came across like an audio something of his on meditations. And I remember doing that and just being like, oh, wow, there's like so much here and like noticing how it affected my everyday life and just my state of mind. Um, and yeah, it's like, I feel like the sit down to actually meditate doesn't fully happen that often, um, which is why I love our Zen zone, <laughs> because like it gives me a reason to actually do it. Um, but the, the, the state of mindfulness, I think, is something that is carried into so many different aspects of, of spirituality. And yeah. spirituality itself has been like such an evolving journey for me. I mean, I remember... I was, how old was I? I was filming Journey to the Mysterious Island. Mm -hmm. um, and I was on the big island where they shot Jurassic Park. Yeah. And so it's just like beautiful rolling mountains. It's like stunning. And I remember thinking to myself like, oh, like I am spiritual because I, I, I don't, can't like relate anymore to religion practices that were instilled with me as a child but like I feel so much and I know that I'm a part of something bigger and I feel like vibration of the land and I just feel connected to spirit mm. um and then that itself has evolved <laughs> <laughs> so much and like I feel like I'm back at that place where I'm like I am very very spiritual I I take time to connect to my spirit but also spirit around me mm -hmm. um and I make sure I take time to connect to to nature and I give praise when magic happens because it happens all the time and I feel like it's so important to acknowledge it and to give it gratitude because then it starts coming into your life so much more it just it's like it's really insane once you start acknowledging them how like it's it's an abundance of of magic wow <laughs> wow that's contagious I'm literally hearing you say that and I'm like that is so infectious it's just it's so true though yeah. and like it's so beautiful because then you're filling your life with like this the, these moments of wonder yeah and like i think that's so important as an adult because as children we have that all the time yeah but like as you grow up you kind of forget how important it is to have that yeah i'm like such a big kid yeah <laughs> <laughs> that like she's always a child at heart yeah but like wonderment i think is something that's so important for the soul i i couldn't agree more yeah. I, I love that and I think it's when I think about wonder and childlikeness it's the same as what I feel my wife's brought back into my life love that, and I yeah. felt for so long I started to take life too seriously or I was very I was very focused and yeah man my, needs a good woman to bring him back <laughs> absolutely, a thousand percent a thousand percent and my wife has just brought this like childlike energy back yeah. into my life I love that. and it's something you have to protect. Totally. I feel like the childlike energy is something you have to nurture and protect in yourself, in yeah. the people you love. Totally. In I the mean, people around you. I mean, even your inner child. Like, I remember that being like a, a big, big wake up moment for me. I, I think it was in like Larry Moss's acting classes. Mm -hmm. I was doing like one of his intensive workshops and he talks about how important it is to like nurture your inner child because there, we all have that. We all have that like little boy or girl inside of us that's like kind of scared at times, but is like so explorative and 
like has wonderment but you have to nurture that yeah. and if you don't like it, it gets neglected yeah. and you can't neglect your inner child definitely not <laughs> definitely not. I mean, no, do you think that's what's i mean for yourself like you've been in the industry a long time now yeah. since you were extremely young and i feel like you've been great at like navigating it with grace and pivoting and figuring things out and obviously from the time we've been getting to know each other through zen zone and even today i can tell that there's so much thoughtfulness and so much clarity for you do you think that nurturing that inner child is what has helped you navigate a very tough industry or what what has that been what I has like, helped you? i feel like that's definitely part of it yeah for sure mm -hmm. um because it allows me to stay extraordinarily passionate mm -hmm. about my loves which is like everything you know like in my work and in my life and in the way i spend my time but i think the thing that honestly has kept me going is accepting change and evolving and and knowing that evolution is like a positive thing and, and leaning into the like scary scary things that like uh, could hurt me and and like just constantly reevaluating what it is to be a human in this experience and like who do I want to be yeah. because like that's genuinely like a choice you like have we have so many choices every single day on like how we build our our character how we present ourselves to the world mm. and like i feel like i've had multiple moments where i've had to like really look at myself and reassess and say what kind of woman do i want to be yeah um and like who am i truly like what what is my core what is my what are my values mm -hmm. um and i feel feel like it's just allowed me to feel really confident and strong in who I am as a person because I think that that's that's where a lot of people have difficulties yeah. in, in Hollywood because you end up like morphing into different people because hey, it's a it's a tough grind but it, it, is, <laughs> it is because people morph into the roles they play totally. they morph into the role they have to play exactly. and portray totally they morph into the role that their manager or their agent exactly. thinks they need to be yeah or the person who came before them that they're trying to be like totally so there's all these identities totally that, yeah you're trying to morph into that it's hard to remember your own i guess what what was a formative experience at a younger age that you think has uh given you a sense of groundedness as you've gone on were there any formative experiences uh, as you grew yeah. at any point in your childhood or no, I mean, early like, teenage years. I, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if this is like oh, actually at all relevant. The first is the best. The first is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was the kid that loved playing in the dirt. <laughs> you cool. know like okay. i was always the kid that was like in the garden like grabbing like pieces of of plants and like smushing them together and like grabbing the flowers and like doing like little collages in the dirt like i've always like been i feel like i've always felt very connected to earth mm -hmm. um and i look back at it now and i'm just like it's so funny because and now I'm I I like love practicing like witchcraft and having rituals and and like playing and being a part of earth and connecting with it is such a big part of it and I'm just like oh wow she was always there yeah she was always there she was always <laughs> playing in the dirt um but yeah like I I feel like I also was raised in a way where like my parents didn't have a lot my dad yeah. was a firefighter my mom was from the Philippines like came out to the stage when she was 24 with my dad mm -hmm. um and it was like the first man she'd ever even been with like wow. first guy she ever kissed like wow. crazy um but I was raised very modestly so mm -hmm. I think that like that definitely shaped me into who I am because I'm very mindful about like where I spend my money mm -hmm. and and like <laughs> what I'm doing <laughs> with it and like I but like it also I think makes me work harder and want to do the work myself do the dirty work yeah, hey I was bringing yeah. it back to the dirt <laughs> um, I love it but yeah like because that's just like my my character that's how I was raised yeah that's that's beautiful to hear and uh I, I'm gonna ask you now to define 
what witchcraft is for the un, you know for those who may not be aware and and those rituals because I think as you say those words uh, I'd love for you to extrapolate them because I've seen so I've seen you post when you get new tattoos and like <laughs> and, and and it's cool but I would love I'd love for you to explain that totally to, to those that don't know. Um, I think like being a witch genuinely is like so many different things for each person. Um, to me, it's it's a, a mindfulness for sure. Um, it's connecting to your elements. Um, it's about understanding the fact that everything is energetic and we can push and pull things mm. um, if we set our mind to it and ask for it. Um, it's a lot of manifesting, mm -hmm. which I yeah. love. Um, and rituals are like, I love like a full moon ritual where I'll like sage my space and like cleanse my energy and my aura and then like ask my angels and my ancestors and my spirit guides to be there with me and to help carry out my message um and then like <laughs> honestly writing things down on some bay leaves and burning them <laughs> is really exciting because it burns and like it's really it's like it really catches flame yeah um, <laughs> it feels magical um but like it's like connecting to earth and yeah. like to spirit and and like tapping in yeah because you i feel like you really can mm-hmm yeah, that, I mean, I love hearing that because I think when people hear the word witchcraft totally. or witches, we have a very dated view. Yeah, of stigmatized that, yeah, sti view exactly. of where you hear a witch and like people are like, burn her at the stake. Exactly. And I, I mean, I grew up in London where one of the attractions to visit as a tourist was the London dungeons. Yeah. And so you'd go to see these London dungeons and they would show you how... Uh, women and mainly women who are wrongly accused of being witches and yeah. of course witches in the stigmatized or the uh, negative sense as totally. we've seen portrayed in movies yeah. and things like that yeah and and you'd see how they'd be burned and and the kind of dungeons that they had to stay in and the states they had to stay in and now obviously when you say the word you're looking at it from like uh the good witch like yeah, you know like literally. the witch of manifestation yeah and, exactly and joy and kindness and i feel that, like that's the modern witch yes yes <laughs> and redefining that word is so important it, because it really is. language i think today is so much of the reason we have disagreements 100 and one of the reasons why we don't understand each other yeah. and when you start explaining what a witch is i'm like yeah that's like uh What's the the witch in um Glenda? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, you read my mind. That's it. And I was like, yeah, she was a Literally. witch and she's called a yeah. witch in the movie. She is. But when you yeah. think about it, the witch you remember yeah. is not her, no, right? No. And so it's so fascinating when you think about it from that way. What yeah. if I love those rituals you just walked us through. When you're doing those rituals or when you've built those practices up what has given you strength to believe that they have an impact is it something you feel is it something you've heard is it is it a connection like how how do you go yes this works for me this matters in my life I feel like it's such an intuitive mm, thing. Yes. And like I said, I, I was the little girl playing in the dirt, yeah, like so it, mushing it up herbs. Connected. And it yeah. does. It feels it feels really grounding and connecting to me. And like I've manifested for years and like if you're very clear and intentional on what you want, you have a much better chance at getting it. Can you than tell us a manifestation <laughs> story? Or can you tell us one that you feels worth sharing? That yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, like even like Cole, mm -hmm. like I I was very clear, very intentional about what it is exactly. Tell us what you're intentional. I, I want to know. Uh, it's like I was like I want someone who. Oh man, I wish I had. I literally have like a list. Okay. Um, it was I want someone who loves themselves wholeheartedly, um, someone who understands the importance of like having a good time, someone who has like the right priorities in life, you know, like has the same fundamentals as me, um, which is like you live. You don't, what is it? You don't live to work. No. You don't, you don't live, live to, to work. work. You, you work, work to, to live. live. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like someone who understands like the importance of life outside of work. Mm. There's a whole list. But literally when I met Cole, I was like, you literally check all my boxes. What I love about your list though, and that's why I asked you because 
I, I expected that your list. That is the most mature, <laughs> refined list I have ever heard of. <laughs> Thank because, you. <laughs> because most lists do not go that deep. Like yeah, that, well, that is a very genuinely, and, I, and I'm not saying this to flatter you at all. I'm genuinely saying it because I hear a lot of lists yeah. in my coaching work and yeah. when I'm with clients and, yeah. and over the years, people that I've worked with and lists, those are all like incredible attributes which show your self-awareness of who you are and what you need in your life. Yeah. But they're also not so specifically defined that it's kind of very difficult that that exists. Totally, if that totally. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like I want this and I want that and he should have this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. stuff about he should have. No, 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 it's no. It's about no. his mindset and exactly. his belief system. Walk us through, how do you assess and assess is the wrong word because in a relationship you're not assessing someone how do you engage with someone in a way to know that those things exist within them and i'm asking you this for yourself yeah because i find that sometimes people may make a list or they have a list and first of all i would like to remind anyone if you are going to make a list think about vanessa's list and just think about how how I'm trying to find the right word to define your list. I would say that it is extremely mindset based mm -hmm. and it's extremely an approach to life. Yeah. You're exactly. looking with someone who has a specific approach to life. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's not that they have a specific That's life. That's very true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does exactly. that make sense? 100%. Yeah. And so how did you, you know, ascertain <laughs> that Cole had some of these things because I think what often happens is when we get attracted to someone or we feel a sense of infatuation mm -hmm. or we feel some chemistry or a spark with someone, often that ability to ascertain whether we're really going to be a good match goes out the window. Totally. How are you able to hold both? Because I think we do need attraction and chemistry. Of course we oh, do. Yeah, 100%. But at the same time, you're saying, well, I was able to assess that he does have certain yeah traits. i mean i was in an eight year long relationship before mm -hmm. him um so after that i was like okay we're getting serious <laughs> like we are going to make a list of things that i need like genuinely like not want but actually need um and with some of it it was being very straightforward um with like <laughs> my questions as to like how he goes about life um and then in other ways it was just like really observing him and like genuinely his approach to life um like he he has like an infectious spirit and i'm like that is something that is so beautiful and so wonderful and i'm like i, I see myself in that <laughs> as well <laughs> but like we just like had the same the same spirit and i think that like straight off the bat i was very forthright with like what it is that i want in a relationship and like i was like cool so you're down you you're into those things as well love that <laughs> <laughs> but like just being very straightforward like you plan on getting married one day like you plan on having kids you like kids what's your relationship with your parents like yeah. what's your relationship with your friends how do you enjoy your work like everything just like diving in because like if you don't like those things get lost in the shuffle and then you end up investing time on people that you shouldn't is that date one <laughs> that, that might have been date two. Yeah. <laughs> might have been date two. Yeah. I, I am so happy hearing you say that. I And I just want everyone to know that while we're having this conversation, I do not know this story in depth the way Vanessa is explaining it. So this is also my first reaction to it. I am so happy hearing you say that. Like it, it gives me so much assurance and confidence in what I hope people will do to find totally. love in their life. Yeah. Uh, I did the same with Radhi. We had the same conversations. We talked about children we talked about our values we talked about our beliefs we talked about expectations yeah. i was very clear with radhi of the man that i think i am and the man that i didn't want to be mm -hmm. uh, i was clear about what my aspirations and priorities were totally. and what i wouldn't be able to prioritize exactly yeah. and it was uncomfortable to say totally. those things because yeah. you're scared that yeah. like well maybe this person's going to run away totally when they hear what i'm actually like yeah but then if they stay exactly then they actually signed on for and that and it's like you give like 
my my sister actually does a podcast as well and I was like listening to it the other day and she was like it's so important to like tell your friends or your partner if something's bothering you because yeah. then you give them the opportunity to adjust yes. like otherwise they don't know yeah shout out Stella <laughs> shout out Stella what's her podcast called <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy okay listen to that episode what was the episode about it was about this um what was that one about just like friends and like you know feeling fomo it was fomo (laughs) right yeah no because it's it's also just like i know that we got a message um i think you sent it to my team saying can i bring dala today yeah and and i love that you said that and i'm so glad she came yeah because i would have been so sad if i as a friend, it's like if you if you felt that, but then you didn't tell me. Yeah, totally. Right, like totally. And if I didn't know, and then you just like gotta ask. you just gotta you just gotta know, like. And I'm so happy she's here, and I'm so happy to meet her. And yeah. And when you told me the reason, you're like, I've been traveling and I haven't seen her for. I'm like, that is so beautiful. <laughs> like, why would you not? But we're so we're so scared yeah. of showing that side of ourselves to someone of being like, this is what I need or and this like is what I want. Honoring our truths. Yes. I think like it's so easy to disregard our truths mm-hmm. when you like have thought and you're like, oh, like I wish that this would happen. And like, but no, like it, it shouldn't matter. Like it's, it's okay. It's fine. I don't really care. And yeah. like you don't honor your truth. And so I feel like it's something that you have to be actually mindful about and to like really listen to your intuition and like your inner voice your inner child like you really have to like honor all of yourself because if you're not then you're suppressing yourself and then it's gonna seem okay for someone else to suppress you because you're doing it to yourself yes wow that is that's so true yeah that is so true that and then that's just like a toxic talk it starts (laughs) off toxic (laughs) and that's the point right it's like if you plant a toxic seed exactly like that's what's gonna grow yes and it's really hard to then switch to a rose bush or yeah. uh, you know to grow a beautiful tree or plant yeah. or whatever it is like i i wonder then how do you then navigate obviously when you do that when you are like well here's what i'm looking for and here's, yeah. here's what's important to me how do you then navigate it when you don't necessarily align or agree how, how have you dealt with that because i think that's another healthy thing to think about i think we often have this romantic view of manifestation. Totally. And I don't think that's what you're suggesting, but I think a lot of people have this romantic view that when you're clear, you get exactly what you want the way yeah. you want it. I don't think that's what you're no, saying. No, 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 no. That's definitely not the case as yeah, well. Like, yeah. I think that like everything does come back. Yes. Not always in the way that you expect it to. Exactly. Not always at the time that you want it to, but it always does in one yeah. form or the other. And I yeah. like, I, I truly believe that. And I like see that happening because I'll, sometimes I'll ask for something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. That's not like how I expected it to come. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, like I, I was on our Zoom, like I finding know. love on, on a, Zoom. On a little, uh, finding love like, on Zoom on a tiny little like, like screen. not like at all what I was like expecting at all, but like it's it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, so I, I feel like it always, it always comes back around. Um, but like the mindfulness is like so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love hearing about it and I can't wait to see you both together <laughs> and I can't wait to finally hang out with Cole <laughs> who by the way for anyone who doesn't know he'll join the meditation when he's like on the field like yeah. he'll be like in the stands he'll be <laughs> you know walking to a game like he'll be yeah. driving to get whatever it is and he's he's always on and I think there's so much to be said for that as well to find people in places of similar values 100% like I, I, I've always been a great encourager of that is that you're going to find people when you're doing things that you're both passionate about and you're not going there to date. Like It's so funny. I literally was on the phone with my friend Vince this morning and I was thinking about it and I was like, it's so funny because I feel like all my best relationships have like such an interesting like story as to how we met. Like my friend Vince, who I was on Mm -hmm. the phone with, we met in a yoga class. Wow. And he's like one of my best friends. My other best friend, Gigi, we met like in Bali because I was with there with Oakley like doing a surf thing even though I'm not a surfer but I'm like you know I'm all about like trying new things and having new experiences because I feel like it builds character and it's also just like a great time yeah of course yeah (laughs) but like it was like one of those moments as well and then like me and Gigi sat across from each other at the table and we like locked eyes and we were like "I, I see you 
I see you in a way that's like different. Like my soul sees you. Yeah. Um, and like it's just so many of my relationships. I'm like, it's just so funny how like you put yourself into the right place in in a place of love and you will attract it. Yeah, definitely. And this is Gigi you do workouts with, right? Yes. Yes, yes. That's <laughs> Me and Gigi like. do a lot of things yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot of things <laughs> in the work. During quarantine, we like really put our minds together and we're yeah. like, let's be creative. Like yeah. let's let's keep the ball rolling. And we like we developed an animated show. We developed like a, a reality show for yeah. ourselves. Oh, very and cool. we like wrote a feature with our friend. And we were just like, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I know. But yeah. like all because we sat across from each other in Bali. That's incredible. And I love that that's a recurring pattern in your life. Oh, completely. That, that the deepest relationships you have, whether it's Vince or Gigi, as you yeah, said, yeah, and now yeah. Cole, that they've come from these places where you weren't looking for that. Yeah. And so I think we often hear this idea of like, you don't have to look for love. And that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that you often find it in a place of mutual value. When you're loving yourself and yeah. honoring yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the key. Yeah. That's exactly it. And, and so much happens when you spend time in places of purpose. Totally. Like, I feel like when you're going there for a purpose-based mm -hmm. reason, yep. you're more likely to have this yes. synergy happen with oh a human. Oh my gosh, the amount of stuff that happened to me when I went to Paris for Fashion Week on my own was like, just what? I felt like I had tea for, for months. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was just so cool because I'm like, Paris Fashion Week is something that I wanted yep. to go to for a long time. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go on my own. Because like, it'll <laughs> like, it'll really like put me in there. Yeah. Um, and I, and I love that. Like, I love those solo moments where I, I'm just like out there in the wilderness on my own. And like, you meet people and like connect with people. And I'm like, some of my favorite memories that I've had, like have been because I've gone places on my own. Wow. What's given you that? I, I love hearing that because I'm the kind of person. So radhi has been away for three months and we haven't seen each other. Ah, I miss her. Yeah. Oh my God, and I hate that and so she's, much. And she's coming back in a month and I miss her. So it'll be four months since we've seen Jeez. each other. And I cannot wait. I'm about to throw her a party when she comes back <laughs> and like, full on, like, you know, we're going to go away and all the rest of it, catch it. up and make, make yeah. up for her lost time. But I find that I'm the kind of person that will take myself out for a three course meal oh, yeah. and like go away and go Same. out or whatever yeah. it is. What has given you the confidence in doing things alone? Because I think that is such a healthy habit. Totally. I'm not saying that people should spend all the time alone and <laughs> no, not have No, no, no. But how have you developed that habit? Is it just by practice? Is it just by throwing yourself out there? Or yeah, now I, it sounds like it's something you intentionally do, like Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. I'm sure you could have taken anyone you oh, wanted yeah, to take. but. Yeah. You went on your own. Like. Yeah. Um, I feel like my first solo trip was when I was like, it was right after I did a stint of like really heavy, emotionally demanding movies. Um, I think Give Me Shelter was the last one of that. Um, and I came home and I like genuinely did not know who Vanessa was. I had like gotten so off on becoming this other person and like genuinely changed my mindset, the way that I looked. I put on like 20 pounds, cut off all my hair, like all the things that made me me were not there anymore. And I was like, I need to do something because I'm like scared because I don't know who I am. And I was like, okay, we're gonna go on a yoga retreat. My my publicist at the time was like, I, there's this retreat they're doing at the Four Seasons. Um, it was like a practice, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like go on my own because that scares me. And I was very much in that place of like, do the things that scare you yeah. because you will evolve, like you're forced to. Um, and I was like, you know, like a yoga retreat in Hawaii, like that gives me an excuse to be in Hawaii. <laughs> um, but also like have something to do and like know that I'll be around people because like, filming as well as an adult like when I hit 18 I would go off to film things all the time and I yeah. would be on my own yeah. and so like if I wanted to go to dinner like a lot of times I would just go by myself mm -hmm. and like bring a book and like I definitely would have those moments where I'm like looking around like kind of trying to like <laughs> lock eyes and engage with anyone yeah, yeah. Um, preferably would sit at the bar so I could like talk to the bartender because like I love I love people like yeah. I love I love just like 
like talking to people. Yeah, but you start using a different part of your brain when you do that. Like you start using totally. a different part of your energy where it's like, oh, I'm going to see if I can make something out of nothing. Yeah, That's exactly. a mindset that you lose as we get older. That's very because true. Because most of your life is surrounded by the same people, same work people, same yeah. life people. Yeah. And so like when you're like, oh, I'm trying to talk to the bartender, or I'm trying to lock, even the idea of locking eyes with someone random. Oh my gosh, it like overcomes a thing. fear. Yeah, but it's, it's like. Favorite thing. <laughs> I literally will like be driving and like, will like turn and just like look at people if I'm stopped at a red light and like try to like dance <laughs> with people. The other day, this guy was like listening to a song. We had our windows down he had his windows down and me and my girlfriend were just like body <laughs> rolling like just like locking eyes trying to make this person laugh like yeah. it's I, I love that but the trip the yoga retreat in Hawaii ended up just being like so freeing because I was just like okay like I'm here on my own like I'm just gonna like talk to people that I connect with and like go from there and like genuinely forced me to stay as present as possible because I was engaging with people I know nothing about yeah. I feel like that's the thing I love about talking to people that you don't know yeah. like you're forced to be present because it's like if you're actually trying to engage which not everybody does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but then those are the people you don't need to engage with <laughs> um but when you find people who you can yeah. like it's it, you say you're so present because you're actually listening <laughs> yeah what I, what I love about hearing about your life that I'm learning about you today by being present with you is just you're you are very present because you have all these beautiful memories mm. and I find like these are not ideas in your life or they're not like just concepts that you intellectually understand it's like I feel like your whole life is an experience <laughs> like you're yeah. like oh I went to fashion week because of this and I was in this place because uh, to have deep memories you have to be deeply present. Totally. Because otherwise you forget where you were last week or where you were even yesterday. Totally. And so how have you become more present? I mean, how, have you practiced that? Or is, you've been like that, obviously it sounds like, but it also sounds like it's very intentional again. Like how are you raising your presence uh, when, when you're in a space or in an environment? I think like, honestly, it's come from the reflection and growth that I've done to like actually have confidence in in myself um to like feel like I can take up as much space or as little space as I want um and knowing that I have that choice I've always been a very present person and I think that I've positioned myself now like it's taken so many years of like reflection and growth and like doing all the uncomfortable work to shape me into the person that I am and I look back and I'm like I'm so grateful for all of it I'm so grateful for all the icky times because there's a lot of icky times <laughs> in life yeah. but like by leaning in and like not putting them into like a storage unit in my mind yeah. but like actually processing them and like growing and evolving from it has allowed me to like have confidence in myself because I'm just like I know that I'm enough like yeah. and I'm like I I know that like my point on life is beautiful and I know that like what I want to contribute to to people and to the world is is beautiful and so I'm like it's all good baby. <laughs> like, it's all good yeah and, that, and that's the thing right like when you make sense of your inner world on yeah, your own totally it that's where it has to click 100 percent. because if it clicks for me then like it's okay if it doesn't click for everybody yes, yes. but like i know that like i'm locked in yeah if you know i always say to people like if you have a decision or a choice you want to make and if you know why you're doing it yeah and you're clear on that it will not bother you if other people don't understand. Exactly. But if you don't know why you're doing it, <laughs> then, it's then, then it just like, and that's what I'm hearing from you. It's that that, that inner click has, has, has fit for you. And it sounds like during the pandemic, you were extremely innovative, collaborative, yeah. seemed like you were doing a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. We both shared this in common. We both launched a different type of beverage line <laughs> during uh, the pandemic. And afterwards you launched Cali Water, yeah. which is amazing yeah uh and i want to hear about just 
when, when I first saw it, I was like, cactus, I was like, that is so unique. Like it is so different. I didn't yeah. even, I didn't even know, I and mean, this is gonna sound really silly, but I was like, I didn't even know you could get cactus, cactus water. Cactus water, yeah, yeah, yeah no, so, totally. Like, and I have cactus in my house, so I'm like, <laughs> I had no idea. Like if I cut you, can I drink you? Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but walk us through uh, some of the, some of the, and that that's one of them, I'm sure there's plenty of others, but where did those ideas and innovations start? Because that requires uh, such a, a different mindset. And it sounds like you had this space to be innovative and creative. You said you were doing work with Gigi, but you're yeah. also doing this. I love a collaboration. Yeah, I live for a collaboration because I'm like, I know what I can bring to the table. And then you collaborate with people who knows what they can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you guys have fun doing it together. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> go. Um, and that's literally how I feel like all my business ventures have been. Um, you know, with Cali Water, it was our friend Oliver Trevina. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Shout out Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who is my yeah. business partner and like he came to me and he was like we should we need to like do something together and he was like there's we could do like beverages and he's like there's like cactus there's a lot there's something there and like I went to New Mexico on a road trip and was drinking prickly pear margaritas <laughs> and I was like what is this the heavenly nectar and like why do I know nothing about it yeah. and then started like researching what prickly pear is and then like realized all the health benefits um, and and then, you know, like, we're like, okay, cool. So, like, that's, like, a thing. There's something there. And then, like, him, like, taking the reins and putting together an incredible team to, like, put together this drink and, like bring it to life and then like me doing like the creative and yeah. like the tastings yeah. and I'm like no nah, it's a little off like I need something more of this like maybe a little <laughs> like more monk fruit or like you know like something um and I then love like monk fruit, by packaging the way, so that, yeah. yeah I do too but th it's just like it's such a fun creative outlet mm. for me that like I I really enjoy like it's so stimulating to me and exciting and it's just like really cool being able to be passionate about something and then like sharing that passion with yeah. the masses. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. No, I highly recommend everyone grabs one because it's <laughs> I I just love seeing people find multiple ways to express themselves. One hundred percent, and not being scared and not feeling limited by like oh i'm an actress i should be that or like i'm at this yeah and i'm like but we're all just creative artists individuals 100%. and when we can just like paint through every single color and every single brush there's nothing wrong with that and and i think it should be encouraged more and i think often we feel limited and restricted by what we think people will think and what they yeah, will say. Yeah, literally. And, and we stop realizing that we just have to color more and paint more mm -hmm. and, and get out there more. Is there something you do to tap into more creativity or innovation? Is there any habits or any rituals you have or is that also same connected with doing the intuitive work? It's literally all intuitive, I feel. I And and it's like, it's, it's the magic thing, I think, yeah. that like when I'm doing things that I'm inspired to do and I honor those inspirations, mm -hmm. um, the thrill and the fulfillment that comes along with it is like, what I imagine it's like to have kids, <laughs> you know? It's like because yeah, you're you putting like something. such a vulnerable piece of of uniquely you into mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm. and then and then sharing it, and so it's like it's such a vulnerable thing. Um, like I. I came up with like a, a reality show for for me and Gigi, and I'm like, it's so funny because I like 15 years ago would be like I would never do a reality show like I am a serious actress um <laughs> but this this show like I I, I came up with like, like I birthed it from my mind and I was just like this is something that I love and like would love to do because I feel like it would be hilarious <laughs> and it's a great time but you guys also, are really like, funny together yeah, so, yeah. we're hysterical yeah. I'm like we gotta have something yeah. um but like also so creative and and like down to what we're wearing in our show and like who we're partnered with and like just putting on the the business hat like it's it's really exciting mm -hmm. i'm like she's a she's a woman like she's making moves <laughs> um just because i'm like leaning into my interest and like honoring mm -hmm. the ideas that i have rather mm -hmm. than like pushing them down and the show's happening you know you're, you're making it happen you're making it happen yeah we're, yeah. Making, we're making 
we yeah, have, yeah. we're waiting on someone it takes time. at it takes the moment. Time. It takes time. Um, but like, it's been so exciting yeah. because we've like literally gotten so many of our ducks in the row yeah. where we're like, this would be the dream. And then like, yeah. it's falling into place. And like, I love that. It's just so nice because I'm doing it all like with people that I love. Yeah. I love hearing about ideas when they're being formed. Yeah. Because it's it's special. Like yeah. we usually hear about it like, oh, we just made the show fact. and yeah, it's yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, but this is the part that's so interesting because it's like, well, we did this and now we did this and we're waiting for this and we're figuring this out. Yeah. And I'm hoping that everyone who's listening or watching is hearing it going, oh, that's normal. Like, yeah. you know. It literally stems from an idea. Yeah. Like, what if... <laughs> what if and then like building it off of there and like that's why i love doing things with my friends because the snowballing is so real you yeah, know like yeah. is that what that's called yeah, snowballing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah um and it's just like the best thing because like even like the future feature that we did like it was me Gigi, and our friend asha who has written for like american horror story and like we love American Horror Story. <laughs> um, and it totally fits with the vibe of like our idea. And she was like, you guys want to write a feature? And we were like, yeah. And then we were like, okay, so what if it starts here and it's about like these four witches and like it just snowballs from there. Wow. And it's just like, it's so cool because I feel like everything that I'm doing is something that I'm like so passionate about. Mm. And like, I'm, I'm really like carving out time to like stay super engaged in everything that I'm yeah. doing and not just like taking a back seat. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, how are you? And, and I can see that. I mean, every idea, everything we've spoken about today, I can tell how passionate you are. About. Like, it, it just comes through naturally. Yeah. Like, it's in flow. It's in your heart. It's, <laughs> it's there. So that's so evident to me. As someone who I feel like I live a very similar life and that I do a lot of different things that I'm passionate about. How are you prioritizing, making time to do all of that? Like, what works for you? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people going oh, wow, like, you know, Vanessa's doing a ton of stuff. I mean, she has new movies coming out. She's doing this and she's doing this and she's building this. Like, how, how do you make sense of doing so many different things and how do you balance it? Because you're still, you're still working out. You're still doing your, your own personal practices. How, yeah. are, how are you balancing and managing that all? I think it's about, like, really honoring my, my, my needs and, like, having a strong priority list. Um, I feel like right now I'm being very clear and intentional with my, my career, um, in acting, uh, I've, I'm like, I'm not doing anything unless like it pushes me in a new way, challenges me in a new way, or it's with people that I can work with that I like really respect and I know will help me evolve and grow. Um, otherwise I'm like, I only want to be doing things that like I'm producing yeah, <laughs> because yeah. then I'm like I have like a say on the story and like the way that it looks and like the way that it's shot and, like <laughs> you know like I can be like so much more creative to like the overall outcome of the movie because yeah. a lot of times like so many things end up on the cutting room floor and like that's fine but you're like you watch it and you're like oh they went with that take interesting yeah. um and you've like yeah, and no hard. say over yeah, it and that's hard. It's <laughs> yeah, hard. yeah it's, it's tough really hard. but like I, I'm like as a producer I like can come in and like can help like build out projects and like I can I can actually dream them up myself and like bring them to the table and like find producers that I really respect and admire and like use their minds to like snowball with and and see how we can work together to bring it to life and I just feel like it's it's so much more fulfilling for me as an actress to be able to be a part of that creative yeah um, um, which is why I'm like, one day, one day I will direct because I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> it's something that I love so much. And I'm like, my, my point of view is, I think, not what a lot of people would think because they did like get to know me from High School Musical. Um, I'm like, my taste is like weird and it's trippy and it's yeah. dark sometimes. Um, so I'm like, I, that's something that I would love to eventually get to. But like... I have that aspect of my life and then I have like the business side of things where I'm like making sure I just got an assistant like for the first time Wow! because um, I was like I am too busy and I need to like honor my time and like I need help I yeah. was just like doing everything on my own wow. um, but so like I have her and I'm like now I'm like every top of the week I'm like okay we need to check in with these people um, like set up calls and, and we'll get it done and I make sure to 
check in with all the yeah. businesses, like see what they need, see where we're at. Um, and then like making sure that I have my me time, which is is hard because I feel like the me time also funnels into like my relationship yeah, because yeah. that is what I want. Like yes. I want to be with my partner. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm like also my work i feel also drives my slight me time too because i'm like i'm i'm here in la i'm not with him at the moment because i have things that i'm doing here and like like uh my flat fabletics collection is coming out in april and i'm like that is something that i like design myself That's like amazing. another full creativity step um but i'm like here and i like get to talk about it and like i feel like it's just so, like I said, so nice to have these things that I'm like putting a lot of myself into and being able to talk about them and like share them with others. And like, hopefully that connects me with other people who are like-minded as well, you yeah. know? Well, all I experienced from you today is this abundance. Like there's an abundance of creativity in your life. There's an abundance of expression. There's also an abundance of like genuine confidence in in who you are and how you show up and and everything you're doing and and i love seeing it like it's so <laughs> fun i i find it so fun to observe that in someone yeah totally. because i appreciate that it's taken work and that it's yeah. not something that that person was just given totally uh, and so yeah just just viewing you today and observing <laughs> you today i'm like it's, it's amazing it's electric to, <laughs> to experience that through someone thank you and, and i congratulate so you for all those aspects oh, thank you because thank you. it's i'm sure there's lots of people listening and watching going oh i can be everything i want to be yeah like, i can you like, can yeah it's you okay can. Yeah. it's okay like <laughs> yeah, it's, totally. it's not, you know we don't have to like we don't have to choose anymore and no. you don't have to limit you can yourself. be everything and that that was the th like a big wake up call for me i was yeah. like no one is one thing yeah, like no we're one. so allowed and like it should be celebrated to be as yeah. many different things as you can be as long as they're honest and truthful and like coming from within yeah. not from an idea of what you think you should be doing that's it. Yeah. Vanessa, you've been so generous with your time. I'm like, I could sit here and talk forever. I, I mean, I can, talk, <laughs> I can continue talking for hours. Um, I, you've been, I know you've been traveling. I know you've been moving around. I know you're catching up. So I, I want to express to you so much gratitude no. from my heart for your time, your energy, uh, turning up to the Zen zones, your friendship, your reflections in the Zen zones. Like I always feel like you'll come in and you'll open up and then everyone else feels inspired to open up some more as well. And and even today, like it has truly been wonderful to witness just <laughs> what exudes from you. Um, and, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate uh, you. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. And <laughs> we all do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> uh, send us which, which uh, energies are. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we end every On Purpose episode with what we call the final five. Mm -hmm. um, these are five fast questions Love. that have to be answered in one word to one sentence maximum. Love it. Um, yes. You can take your time to think about them, okay. but the answers are tired. Yeah. So, all right. So the first question is, what is the best advice you've ever received or heard? In this moment of my life where I am, just honor yourself. Mm. That's great advice. We've never had that before on the show. That's work. great advice. It's a good short sentence too. It is. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's easy to remember. Yeah. It's so, because it, I feel like it's so easy to not in so many different aspects. Yeah. And it's like, if you actually do then like y you can like live your truth and mm -hmm. that's what we're all trying to do, right? I love that. <laughs> Question number two, what is the worst advice you've ever received or heard? <laughs> <laughs> um, like maybe always say yes. Mm, that's I good. I feel like um, saying yes can like definitely be a, a wonderful thing, but I think it's what you say no to that shapes you, your character. That's great advice. I really like that. That's beautiful. See, <laughs> this is good. It's good. I, I like it. Yeah. The, the, the stillness is good. Like, yeah. yeah. It takes All a right. sec. <laughs> it does. It does. Okay. Question number three. How would you define your current purpose or the current impact you're trying to have in the world? And mm. so to spread joy. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Yeah. I feel like I have an abundance of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm you do. like, if I can share it, yeah. that's like the most beautiful thing I can offer. I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. All right. Question number four. What's the first thing you do in the morning and the last thing you do at night? 
Um, God, I hate my answer, but if I'm going to answer tru truthfully, yeah. it's probably like, well, it depends on where I am. Yes. Okay. Like if I'm with Darla, I like just find her and like yeah. hold her. A little um, cuddle, yeah. Yes, have a little cuddle and like... I think I like, I'm a big like deep breather in the morning, like that's get back great. into breath, but like check my phone. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> But it also like depends like on if I'm on my own or if I'm with Cole. Yeah. Because I'm like, if I'm with him, then it's like, oh, like my first thing is like, oh, gratitude yeah. and just like love. Um, if I'm on my own, I'm just like, okay, what do we got, Vanessa? <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for the honesty. But I yeah. also like the, the, the mix of answers. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Fifth and final question. If you could create one law that everyone in the world had to follow or one habit that everyone had to do every day, what would it be? Think before you speak. Oh, wow. That was quick. Uh, <laughs> that was I very... don't know if that's like the, I, that's just the first one that pops into my mind. No, but that's... like, it's, it's, I feel like we all, we all could yeah. navigate through life a bit better if we really stopped to like really think yeah. before we, we spoke and be impeccable with your words. Yes. I'm just going to go into the four agreements yes, exactly. real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't mind don't me. Do <laughs> <laughs> Great book. Yeah. <laughs> Great book. Changed yeah, my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I'm such a, such a lover and it really bums me out when people get into arguments mm -hmm. and they say things that they don't mean because they're not thinking before they speak yeah. and like the miscommunication that comes along with it it's just like it's it's heartbreaking to me when relationships can be like just deeply tarnished in those moments of of like heightened heightened emotion yeah um, just because we didn't pause. just because we didn't pause you're so right yeah. that i feel like relationships are ruined just because we didn't breathe yeah literally we didn't pause yeah we didn't take that moment of stillness totally. to respond and not react yeah and you destroy yeah. lifelong relationships yeah. because you misinterpreted a word yeah. or you misunderstood an emotion exactly or you misconstrued a feeling yeah it's incredible but also like just speak your mind i think so the balance yeah the balance yeah, yeah. it's like the balance of it because i feel like i i grew Growing up in the industry is like tough. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is not an answer. I, no, I guess we said one sentence no, no, and now no, I'm like no, going no, no, even no, deeper. I'm packing, I'm <laughs> I like growing up in the industry is tough and I feel like it was really easy for me to just like put on my professional face because like I was doing what I loved at like such an early age. So for me, I was like, okay, like this is my adult voice. Like this is my adult thoughts. Um, and it was like so easy for me to like not just like speak up and I, like I said like if you're suppressing one aspect of yourself then like it dripples into everything and I feel like in relationships through the years like I I look back and I'm like there's there's so many moments where I'm like if I just would have like spoken up and like said how I feel how I've actually felt like so much pain <laughs> and like tears could have been avoided um but like by going through that like I now know like how important it is to like speak up and like honor yourself yeah um because of the times that I didn't yeah it doesn't make it any easier like it's still like something that like even I have to like be like Ooh, okay brave face <laughs> We're talking about this now. Yeah. Go. <laughs> I mean, like genuinely have to hype myself up for. Yeah. Um, but I feel I feel like so many women get into relationships where they're suppressing themselves and like or um, probably men too, you mm -hmm, know, like mm -hmm. and I just I'm I'm so about like living as openly and, and freely and yeah. truthfully as possible um, because that's where I feel like the magic sits, the creativity sits, like that's where if there's an abundance of, of all of it. Um, so I think it's so important to like push yourself to get there. That is a beautiful thing to end on. Like that is such a great <laughs> like grounding <laughs> message. <laughs> for us to throw out into the world. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa, as I said before, I'm so grateful for your time. I'm so grateful for your time. Your energy, your, your presence, just what you brought to this today for bringing Darla. Darla. Having a little wonderful night. Darla, do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, any any message for She's our like, audience? I love life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great message. And I want to thank everyone who's been listening and watching today. And what I'd love for you to do is tag Vanessa and I 
when you share the messages that resonated, the magic that came through, there may be ideas or insights that Vanessa mentioned that you're going to try and practice and apply in your life. I love knowing what you're switching from information to action. That gives me so much joy knowing that you listen to this podcast, but then you make a shift in your life. Uh, please tag me and Vanessa on all social media platforms to let us know what's resonating with you and what's connecting with you. Uh, keep listening to On Purpose and please, please, please go and shower Vanessa with so much <laughs> love she has so much exciting <laughs> stuff coming up whether it's her new line with fabletics whether it's cali water uh she's this is probably going to come out later but she hosted the uh pre-show at the oscars uh I'm just so excited to see what you're going to continue to do. I'm excited for this movie you're going to direct in the future. I'm excited for <laughs> yeah, me too. this reality me too. show. But more, more than anything, I'm, I'm really excited to deepen our friendship, me our too. connection with Cole as yeah. well, with Riley too. Yeah. And I, I love how you show up in the world. And I'm so grateful that I get to know you. So. <sighs> Thanks, Thank Vanessa. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you want even more videos just like this one, make sure you subscribe and click on the boxes over here. I'm also excited to let you know that you can now get my book, Think Like a Monk, from thinklikeamonkbook.com. Check below in the description to make sure you order today.